Hi guys and welcome. I am so glad that you guys are joining me today. If you're new to this channel, make sure that you press the subscribe button and the little bell so that you're notified every time that I upload a video because you don't want to miss any of this, okay? And for those of you guys who are always here joining me, welcome back. You know I love you and you know how we do. So make sure that you subscribe, that you like, share and comment people so we can build Chengi's world and because I wanna chit chat with you guys. I love it when you guys leave a comment. So do that thing for me. So today I was wanting to talk to you guys about kindness and why me? Why am I always the one Hands up if you feel like in your world, you are always the one doing the giving. Everyone wants a little bit of something from you. Okay, you know, the other day I woke up and I was like, you know what? Who wants to do something for the Chang? Okay, like my phone is always ringing. Everybody wants a little bit of something. Chengi, can you? Can you do this for me? Can you help my friend? Can you take my friend with you? Can you? Can you? Can you? Can you? You know, and I have always loved being a servant. I, I, I value being a servant. I enjoy serving, you know, because there's more blessed to give than to receive. I really do enjoy helping people but you get to a point right no matter how much you love giving and how much joy you get from giving where you think hello anybody want to help chengi anyone somebody <laughs> you know because sometimes when i'm in need of help sometimes i look around and i think who's gonna help my behind you know and i realized and as i was thinking that i was thinking how many other people are out there because god began to speak to me and began to share certain things with me and made me realize actually really and truly never ever become resentful of giving um i remember a time when um you know we in my old church many years ago we used to have a night shelter and every weekend in the winter i would go and feed the homeless sleep there feed them in the morning cook for them it was harrowing and hard work but in the time that we helped them and i remember a time came where we we just you know other priorities came and we decided to cancel to to, to stop doing the homeless shelter from that time i noticed straight away that um our builder we were told to leave the building we became a homeless church and everything that was um that we were enjoying the success the wealth the things that were happening outside of the night shelter um that didn't seem related all dried up and the blessing dried up and god mentioned that to me and he said remember when you stopped giving to the homeless one of the things I've realized about spiritual things is, is about natural things and certain things that we do like kindness and giving to others. We don't realize that they become a canopy for our lives because it says give and it shall come back to you, pressed down, shaking together and running over. Um, giving is a, a spiritual principle. Giving is a principle that allows goodness to keep coming your way. But it's a principle that says when goodness comes your way, is going to be multiplied, it's going to be bigger, it's going to be better. I remember because we were running that night shelter, my ex and I were able to buy property, were able to, but we didn't see how these things were related. We just thought we're doing night shelter because our Christian duty and it's harrowing and it's tiring. And after three years, we decided to quit. And after that three years, things just went downhill. Kindness is something that God really, truly uh, puts value on because it is the oil that keeps society going. It's the oil that rescues the needy. It rescues those in problems. And kindness must be shown to everyone. Kindness and giving is a principle that must constantly be shown to everyone, to the rich, to the poor. Because giving is not just of your substance. Giving sometimes is of yourself. I have had times where I just don't want to but sometimes i will go and sit with an old person and have a cup of tea with them for an hour because they're just lonely to me it's just me being me but i know now because i'm more conscious of spiritual things i'm more conscious of 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 principles and when you do things consciously and deliberately you you are able to perceive the results that are coming from it and sometimes i realize right this person is alone this person is lonely and when i so into them is going to come back to me i will never be lonely i will always find the person to talk to and somebody to love me and to take time for me and even if it doesn't come to me i've realized that some of the things that we do and some of the blessings that we're sowing don't always come to us they come to our loved ones they it means my mom who is in the states and living in you know as an older person alone 
while she has my sister there, she will never be lonely because the time I am sewing with this um, old lady that I, I don't even know, I have no relationship with her, but the time that I'm sewing into her means that my mom will never ever struggle for company and for company that is relevant and right for her. And, you know, I was talking to my mom this morning and she was saying, oh yeah, I've got this young girl, who you know, she takes me everywhere. And I thought, well, that's a seed that I've sown. You know, I, I sow that seed and it, it was reaped somewhere else. So that's the one point, one of the points I wanted to say that when you sow a seed in one area, don't think that because I'm helping Sally, the help must come back from Sally. When I'm down and out, Sally must help me. Because this is some of the reasons why we stop giving and we become resentful. is because we're always pouring into Sally's life. We're always watching Sally's kids. We're always looking after Sally's mom. We're always in Sally's business, making Sally's life better. But when our stuff hits the fan, Sally ain't nowhere to be found, okay? Sally ain't trying to help you. Sally's telling you about how she can't help you. And you're like, yeah, I, I took a shift of work. I've cancelled work jobs before to look after and to help a friend with the pickup. Okay, I won't go to work on that day. I forfeited to help her because she's in this thing. But when it comes to me and I'm like, I'm in a stink, ain't nobody trying to quit their job. And I got really resentful because what I was doing was I was looking at Sally to be the one to give back to me when I was in need. I was investing in Sally because I wanted Sally to give it to me. But you see, it says, you know, the word tells us that we must give us unto the Lord, that everything that we do, we must do it as though we're doing it for God. Why? Because people don't always remember to be grateful. People don't always remember to pay back good for good. Why? Because the principle is about you. When you give, you grow. The Bible says that the greater are blessed by the lesser. The, the, the lesser is blessed by the greater. The one in the position to give will in the spirit realm and spiritually be in fact greater than the one who's receiving. So whenever you stand in a position of giving, you therefore in that moment are the greater. And the greater, we all want to be great, but we don't realize that the greatest amongst you, like Christ says to his disciples, is the servant, the one that serves the one others, the one that washes their feet, will be the greatest amongst the 12 of you. Because you're there debating who is the greatest amongst us. Eh. And Jesus is like, yo, the one that serves is the greatest. But we as human beings don't realize. So when you are giving, you are operating in your superiority. You're operating in a superior position. So don't resent it. But also, the reason why it doesn't come from Sally is because often the blessing will come from John. It will come from the help will come from but we don't see that the help is coming we just wanted to come from sally the fact that uh, susan is ha more than happy to help us pick up our our child the fact that paul is more than happy to to watch him during the day the the, the fact that this person is more than happy and that help is coming we're resentful because we're giving that help to sally and it's not coming back so we're becoming oblivious and our hearts and minds are being closed off to where the help is actually coming. That that seed has provided three people that are willing to give, you know. And the reason for it is we mustn't give to people with the desire to receive from people. We can give to God with the desire to receive because he said give and it will come back to you. So of course, if you've made me that promise, then when I give to you, I totally expect it to come back to me. But when you give unto man, when you give to people, don't give with then you owe me girlfriend or whatever, you need to pay me back. Because that is not how you will get your blessing. And when it comes back, when you help Sally, four people are gonna come and help you. I've had situations where I've helped so many people with your kids, and I thought, but well, no one's there to help me. And I have asked, I can, I had a friend who just didn't, you know, on her day off, when it helped me pick up Josh, I have people who help me all the time, but because I was looking at, but I helped this one, this help should come from that one, but that's not how it works. So don't always expect that the ground in which you sow is the ground in which your harvest will come from. And uh, uh, another thing is, I uh, wanted to say is, um, give of yourself and of your substance. One of the things I found is people who have money and, and like to have a friend who, if she has it, it's yours. I, I, she, I, I think her whole life is like this, take from me. And she's such a giver, so generous, it's ridiculous. And sometimes it's so easy to give financially it's easy to give of your substance you get used to giving of things that you forget to give of yourself and sometimes when 
we get to a comf when your giving gets comfortable then you've peaked whatever you are going to receive from that giving has peaked you have to challenge yourself to give more and from a different place too you know some people are just born to give of their substance but sometimes you have to give of yourself what can i do what can i give within myself what who can i look after I have a friend who looks off, who who helps the aged once every month. She donates her time to cook, to clean, and to entertain elderly people. I see the blessing in her life all the time. She probably doesn't even see, but I see the blessing in her life all the time. She is so blessed in so many ways that she doesn't realize that it's it's because she donates her time to vulnerable people. And so, you know, one of the things that um I, I want to challenge us those of us who feel like they're always giving is keep giving and and never become resentful and keep 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 giving and 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 it will come back to you and that kindness and that giving is something that you set up as a memorial it won't only just come back to you it will come back to your children your grandchildren your great grandchildren <coughs> i've seen it happen so many times where something that your great great grandmother did has opened a door and 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 is now blessing the the grandchild so i wanted to say that when we get into to to that kind of space where we feel like who's gonna you know and and it was triggered by a friend who wanted me to help another friend and it was like let's help her let's help her come on Chengi, let's help her let's help her she needs help she needs help she needs help and i was thinking i need help hello somebody help me you know i have things that i want to do and I realized that actually I was starting to grow a sense of resentment. So this really is to say, don't grow weary in doing well. Don't ever tire of doing good. My boss the other day was saying, you know, I'm so tired. Everybody's asking me for money. Everybody wants money, Chengi. So if anybody calls, I'm not here or whatever. And, you know, I, I, I said to him, you know what? Um, because of your giving... This place has is successful. This place is doing well. This place is because you don't. You're, he's such a generous, giving person. And I, I said to him like, you, you have to keep giving and never get tired because the day that you decide that you're not going to bless people through your business or the people that work for you, you're not going to help them. It will dry out. You have to continue to 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 give because that is what keeps god bringing goodness your way when we become fountains of life in other people's lives then god has is incentivized to keep our fountain constantly overflowing he's incentivized to 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 to, to let streams come into our lives because he knows that when he gives us something it's a, it will be shared to those who need it and so for those of us who feel like you know i am tired of being the one who's always giving and nobody's got time for me Look again, look again and ask yourself, is that the truth? Is there really no help for you? Is there really no one who is there for you? Or is it just that the people you're giving are not the ones giving back? And why are you getting tired of giving? You know, have you, um, are you, are you giving from the wrong place in your heart? If you're giving out of obligation, if you're giving out of a sense of, oh, I've got to, otherwise if I don't, then that's the wrong place to give because you have to give from an open and happy heart. And if it doesn't please you to give, and if that giving does not bring you joy, then maybe that's a giving that you shouldn't be be doing and yes there are times when god will say don't give to that person and i've been surprised when god's like no you need to stay away i'm thinking no but they need my help but no it's not this is going to not bring you it's going to disturb your peace because you're going to invite this person into your life and this person is not ready to be in your life anymore or yet or they will depend on you in a way that you won't be able to sustain so right now you can't do the giving so you know you've got to take that and and, and be conscious am i giving from from lack am i giving what i don't have to give because you can only give what you have so if you're giving you know from a tired place where you're giving from you know a really sort of drained place then you need to ask yourself maybe i'm giving from emptiness and i need to fill up so that i can have more to give but i i hope that you guys really enjoy this video it's not so much to do with love romance and dating i know but i i want to throw in a few as i've said before videos that just really are important to me and a theme that's important to me at the time and you know i on the subject of romance love because i need to leave you with a little bit of something something it's so easy sometimes for us to give 
give to strangers, to give to people who don't know us because it feels good to do a good deed for a stranger or, or somebody who's distanced. And sometimes we can stop giving the people who are right next to us. We can stop giving the love, the affection, the time, the, the attention to our children, to our husbands, to, to, to our, our, our significant others because we, we have you know, we, we think that giving is only valuable when it's going outside the home. But I want to remind you today that, you know, even if you are married and in a relationship and you feel like you're the one who is always, always, always giving in that relationship, don't grow weary. Don't grow weary. Give, 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 and it will come back to you. It might not come back to you through your spouse. It might not come back to you through, through, through him or, or, or through her, but it will come back to you. But, you know, one of the things about being in a relationship with someone is that, you know, love tames and love never fails and love is giving and God never tires of giving, never ever. He never tires of giving and neither should we. And that is the principle of prosperity. I've always said that I am rich. I measure my wealth by the amount that I can give, not the amount that I can keep. You know, I, I am always looking when I go to church, I always think, okay, when I can give more in the offering, when I can up my weekly give, then I know I'm prospering. Not when I can buy new shoes or new whatever. When my giving, when somebody can come to me and ask for something and I can give that without it being, oh, a bit of a stretch, then I know I'm prospering. So I measure success by how much I can give. And so, guys, I hope this was helpful and useful. And I really wanted to share it with you because it's my heartbeat and it's, like I said, something that's hot on the track. So give to those that are close to you, that love you, that care about you and give to those that you don't know who will never be able to repay you back and give to those who don't deserve it but just keep giving and while you're giving make sure you subscribe like comment and i'll see you again check me out on my facebook instagram chengi's world and twitter chengi pot i'll see you soon love you lots Mwah.